Hello and welcome to a new session for this online course on introduction to embedded system design. I am your instructor Dhananjay Gadre. In this session, we are going to consider uh, remaining topics related to analog and digital converter and the ability of the microcontroller to read and generate analog voltages. We are also going to consider uh, how the microcontroller can generate random numbers and a little bit part about one of the experiments that you previously saw that we did uh, which was to power a MSP430 microcontroller using a lemon battery invoking the low power modes. I am going to show you little more details about it. So, in this uh, uh, in this lecture we are going to talk about uh, first of all the random number generators. Now, random numbers are very important for embedded applications. Uh, a random number generator produces a random number uh, which cannot be reasonably predicted apart from being uh, er, by a random chance. These can be true hardware based random number generators although there are no true random number generators all mechanisms are some sort of pseudo random number generators. Uh, you can do that using a hardware approach or you can utilize some software approach. We are going to discuss both these methods here. Now, what are the applications of such random number generators? You would use it in computer simulations. You can also use it for gambling. You may have seen that one of the projects that we de demonstrated uh, in the second lecture was uh, dice and for that we use some sort of random number generator. You could use it in cryptography and many security applications and there are many such applications. Now, what are the various methods by which you can generate such random numbers? One is using a noise because now noise is random. So, if you sample that noise you would get a value which is random and therefore, this could be a source of your random number. You could use uh, for that noise source you could use a high value resistor, you could sample uh, external sound and so on. Another source of uh, such uh, hardware uh, noise is through a Zener diode. You could uh, use a switch to stop a high frequency counter the value in that could be random if the uh, switch press is an asynchronous event that is a human has pressed it. You can use uh, interesting uh, topology called a linear feedback shift register. We are going to dedicate few slides on describing what a linear feedback shift register is. We are going to show couple of experiments how we can use LFSR to generate pseudo random numbers. And at the end you can also use built in random function that many uh, embedded C compilers support. Now, a linear feedback shift register is a shift register basically it is a whole a few uh, d type flip flops which the output of one feeds the input of the second and so on and then the last one is fed back into the input. The of course, you just do not connect it like that you operate on the outputs in some way and the linear function could be through a XOR or a XNOR gate. Now, because these are flip flops you need to initialize them with some value when you turn the power on and that value is called the seed value. The linear feedback shift registers work on the principle that if you have n bits of flip flop then if you choose these uh, feedback function appropriately you could have in principle 2 raised to power n minus 1 uh, combinations. So, this is just like a counter when you have a n bits of uh, d type flip flops you can generate 2 raised to power n uh, combinations if except in a counter these are always uh, you know you know either it is increasing value or decreasing value up counter or down counter. So, you have 2 raised to power n in the case of LFSR uh, what is called as a maximal length of LFSR you will not get 2 raised to power n combinations, but one less and that is why we say it is 2 raised to power n minus 1 we will see why it is so. Now, basically uh, LFSR consists of d type flip flops as you see here, here is the input of the uh, first one that feeds the second one and so on. Now, from some of these flip flops you take the output and pass it through certain uh, XOR gates 
and that feeds the input. Now when you load it with the initial number and then you clock apply the clock for every clock signal the values that the uh, flip flops will produce they will appear random and that is why this is called a pseudo random number generator. Now the combination in this case we have shown a 8 bit LFSR. Now wherever you take the value out here, here, here and here these are called taps. So we have taps at 8, 6, 5 and 4 for a 8 bit shift register. Uh, now how do we find out where these taps uh, should be applied when you have a different uh, length of LFSR? Well you do not have to uh, sweat too much if you search the internet you will find many sources. For example, we have taken this source from a Xilinx website and they have a linear feedback shift register which instead of using XOR gate it uses XNOR and it has the value of n that is the number of flip flops from 3 to 160 bits and you can imagine the total number of random sequences that will produce is 2 raised to power 161 minus 1 and that is a very very large number. Remember that 2 raised to power 20 is a mil approximately a million, 2 raised to power 30 is a billion and so you can imagine what 2 raised to power 60 would be a very very large number. So the sequences that such a shift register will produce compared to the last value you cannot predict uh, the next one and that is why this comes in a category of software based uh, random number generators. Now why do we have minus 1 here? why do we always have one less is if the shift register had an initial value of 0 then no matter what operation that you perform on it it will always remain 0. So we have to exclude that from the number of combinations that are available and that is why it is always 2 raised for n minus 1. So this is what you get now the question is how do you get the seed value if you write a program in which you define the shift register and the taps your uh, problem will be how do you initialize this shift register. If you always initialize it with a known value because in a program you say uh, seed is equal to so on and so forth it will always uh, you know you know you will always predict the can always predict the sequence. So getting the first seed value is a tricky proposition but there are many options. If you have a microcontroller such as MSP430 and it has analog input if you put a large enough resistor or even if you keep the analog input open and if you sample this signal you will find that it reads a random number or it reads a value which you cannot predict and this could act as a seed. So what we have done is we have used this mechanism to illustrate some uh, uh, a, code, a couple of code examples. In the first code example we are going to have connect a switch on our MSP430 lunch box on P1.3. We have also connected displays as we have seen in our previous examples in the 4 bit mode and we have connected a very large value resistors 1 mega ohm resistor to ground. What we do that when you run this program every time uh, when you initialize it when the program starts running for the first time it will sample the analog input. <coughs> Use this value as the seed initialize the LFSR with the seed and then every time you press the switch it will generate the next number and you can find out what those numbers are. This is the code uh, example I am not going to go through it it is uh, by this time you would be able to very easily understand how it works. Here is the uh, seed part initialization and now you are uh, trying to uh, count numbers and print them. Now what you will see is when you press the switch first time it will uh, when you turn it on you will get a seed value and now when you press the switch it will feed this seed value into the LFSR which is a 8 bit LFSR and will produce the next number. So every time you press the switch you will get a new number and uh, try to play with it to see whether you can predict the next number. We have a new modification where we uh, modify the shift register. Uh, LFSR to a 32 bit size and instead of using a switch we just constantly update it uh, the value uh, that is shift the numbers and the, uh, the least significant bit we send it to the onboard LED of uh, the lunch box. What would you expect? You would expect that the LED will be on and off on and off but 
whether it is on or off or for, for how much time it is on or off will be pretty random. So, what you would notice is that the LED appears to flicker. So, this would be a good way to create a candle like performance on the LED it would appear like a flickering candle. So, if you uh, compile and download this second code example you and you run it you would see that the LED which is connected to port 1.7 is flickering at a random uh, rate and it would appear like a candle. The second part of this lecture deals with uh, the mechanism or the requirement of converting digital numbers into analog voltages. We have already seen this in a previous lecture using the pulse width modulation technique. But the problem with pulse width modulation technique is that it is not able to produce analog voltages at a very fast rate. Why? Because of the limitation of the frequency of the PWM signal itself. And so, uh, we are going to look at various other options of generating analog voltage using a D to A converter. And there are many uh, mechanisms to do that. The block diagram is that you have certain number of pins here n bits. So, you would be able to generate 2 raised to the power n voltages in the range of 0 to some maximum voltage. There are uh, various methods. The first method we have already seen using a PWM. Then you can have uh, DAC made out of resistors and current sources and switch capacitor and resistor using R to R ladder as well as successive approximation type of DAC. Uh, in this uh, example here we are going to create a R to R ladder network. It is called R to R because it only uses two values of resistor a R and a 2 R. For example, you could choose R to be 10 kilo ohm and a 20 kilo ohm. So, you could choose these two value of resistors and connect them in this fashion. This is the R to R ladder network and it is a 8 bit TAC because we have 8 output pins from the microcontroller feeding this DAC and here is the output. And this is the equation that governs the uh, uh, bit values and its impact on the actual output when you uh, uh, run this code it is going to generate a sawtooth waveform on your output uh, pin uh, which is the output pin here uh, after you. Now, it is very important that the value of these resistors are all equal 10 kilo ohms and 20 kilo ohms, but how do you ensure that you get uh, accurate 10 kilo ohm resistors. What you can do is you can have a bunch of resistors and then you can using a multimeter find out few resistors 10 kilo ohms and few 20 kilo ohms which match each other's values as much as possible and then use that to create such a uh, DAC. When you run this program here I have shown uh, that you connect port 1 pins to uh, R to R ladder network and when you connect it to the oscilloscope here is what you would get a, as a 8 bit DAC and this frequency is very low but that is because the uh, number of uh, bits are uh, large 8 bits and the frequency is not very high. And also you will see that this sawtooth is not really a straight line and that is because the resistors are not really matched values. So, if you have a better uh, you know values of resistors which match each other well then you would find that the uh, DAC output in this case is much linear. And the reason why the uh, frequency appears to be very low is also because a certain amount of delay has been introduced in this uh, in this code. If you remove this delay you would find that the, the uh, sawtooth waveform is of a much higher frequency. Now, instead of a 8 bit uh, DAC you can have a 4 bit DAC and now you see the frequency has improved also because the number of steps that you have instead of 256 steps you have only 16 steps. The third part of this uh, lecture is about revisiting the lemon battery that we created in the past. As you remember we uh, I showed you this demonstration that we created a battery out of lemon and two dissimilar metals as electrodes one was the copper here this is copper and what is inserted in the lemon is a, a, a different metal. Uh, actually extracted out of a uh, alkaline battery and using this combination uh, each of these. So, these are four uh, cells each of these cells produces 
0 0.9 volts. So, roughly from these this battery uh, you get about 3.6 volts and using a, a setup which was like this that this is the lemon battery 1, 2, 3 and 4. We connected it to a microcontroller MSV430. Remember we programmed it in the lunch box then we took the IC out put it in the breadboard and connected the crystal to the uh, crystal pins. So, that it is working at 32 kilohertz and then on the P 1.7 pin we connected the LED like this and the uh, microcontroller this is the VCC and this is the VCC pin this is the VSS that is the ground pin and of course, a crystal was connected to appropriate pins of the uh, uh, microcontroller and you saw notice that this pin this LED would blink every second in a flash and so I am going to go through the code and also uh, uh, talk about the current that uh, this entire setup uh, consumed. We monitored this battery over a period of 14 days that is this battery continued to operate work non-stop for 14 days. We measured the current that was being consumed by the setup I will tell you how uh, and then we estimated what was the capacity of this battery. Now, when the uh, battery volt this battery typically has a very large output impedance which means if you try to draw large current the voltage will drop and so to uh, make sure that the microcontroller is not affected when the LED is turned on it would take more current. So, we connected a large capacitor for measurement about uh, 4700 microfarad. So, that it would filter out uh, whenever the LED is being turned on and we noticed uh, the setup let me show you the setup what we did was we uh, took the battery here and connected it to the microcontroller VCC and had a small resistor connected here this is the ground pin of the MSP 430 and we connected a very large value of capacitor across this. And then we used this this was about a 100 ohm resistor and we observed the voltage on this and from this we estimated and of course, you had the LED connected here. And from here we estimated the amount of current being consumed by this. The average current when the LED was on it would consume about uh, 500 uh, micro amperes of current when the LED was not on it would be less, but the average current was roughly 300 micro amperes. So, 300 micro amperes into 14 days into 24 hours into 60 minutes will give you roughly 100 mAh battery capacity. So, this is the kind of uh, performance you can expect out of a simple battery that you can create on your own. This is the code you can uh, compile and download this code here uh, here is the main program the watchdog timer has been turned off. Uh, the code uh, was using the uh, crystal oscillator and so it has to be ensured that the oscillator is working. So, the uh, oscillator bit was monitored if the uh, oscillator flag uh, shows a fault you are going to wait for it and after that you turn the timer on to give you one second uh, interrupt. You turn the uh, uh, pins so that you are making the port P 1.7 as output and then you turn the uh, microcontroller to operate in the low power mode 3 with the interrupt enable turned on. And so, every time the uh, timer expired it would take you to the interrupt vector which is here in that the bit was uh, made high for a little while 
and then made low and then you would go back into low power mode. And that was the reason why the microcontroller consumed very little power for its operation. The only time it consumed more power was when the LED was on. So, I recommend that you uh, build this code and if you want you can create such a battery at your own uh, place and see how uh, MSP430 microcontroller operates in such a low power situation by turning everything off except the time when the interrupt is generated and the LED is turned on. So, this is uh, to highlight the low power uh, operation of uh, MSP430 and with this we cover how MSP430 can be used to generate random numbers, how MSP430 can be used to generate analog voltages and also how MSP430 has this rich uh, low power modes of operation and you could optimize your uh, system so that it conserves as much power as possible. I am going to stop this lecture here and I will see you soon with a new topic. Thank you.